Maya and her brother Marco sit down at the kitchen table to start their school day. In homeroom, Mrs. Vasquez greets Maya and helps the class get organized for the day. After reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, everyone heads to first period. In English, Maya is excited to participate in a discussion of Anne of Green Gables. Yesterday, she read a chapter and watched a video with questions to help organize her thoughts. Maya's teacher helps the class explore the story's setting, including the time period, culture, and geography. Next is math, and the class reviews some proportional relationship problems from the previous day. Mrs. Chen watches them work while giving individual feedback using Zoom chat. At the end of class, everyone answers a few questions, which helps Mrs. Chen tailor the next day's lesson to their understanding. In history, Maya participates in a lesson on Lincoln's House Divided speech. Mr. Baldwin annotates the text on screen while asking the students questions about virtue as well as facts. Maya loves this speech and feels inspired by the abolitionist's courage. Maya plays a fun review game with her classmates in Latin class. Then in science class, there's an experiment. Together, Maya and her dad watch a short video about the role earthworms play in making healthy soil. Then they go to the kitchen and take out a small container from the refrigerator. Maya guides her father through the experiment and takes careful notes as he drips water on the worm. When the experiment's over, they take the worm outside and put it in the garden. At lunchtime, Maya and her mom sit on the back porch with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. On the laptop, other families are on screen for a lunch bunch meeting, chatting and telling jokes. With all her live sessions done, Maya has a flexible afternoon. She stays outside for art class, spending an hour filling pages in her sketchbook. After that, she heads to the den to read Anna Green Gables. Finally, it's time for soccer practice, and Maya goes to play with her friends. Back at home, Maya sets the table for dinner. When the family is done, Maya finishes her ELA homework, and her mom comes to help with math. Together, they watch a short video. Then Maya attempts some new problems and submits a photo of her work. She had some trouble, but that's okay. Mrs. Chen will help her understand everything tomorrow. Her homework finished, Maya closes the computer and goes off with her mom to read together before bed. Tomorrow's another big day at Great Hearts Online. Really what led us to Great Hearts um, specifically was my children's academic needs. I have three children who are dyslexic. As a mom, seeing them get the services that they need is just um, amazing. They have excelled, the support is fantastic, the communication is out of this world. If there's any concerns that I have with their academics or where they're struggling, I can email their teacher or the special ed director and immediately I get a response. Well, I don't feel as stressed anymore with, you know, because they get up and we have breakfast together and then they go sit down and, you know, they start their classes with their teachers. And, and so it just, it's a lot less stressful and a lot more freedom. We definitely like to travel as well. Um, and so uh, it's given as an opportunity to do that or come to a park, you know, after class. And, and they love just being outside and riding their bikes and their scooters and, you know, just having fun and being kids. If you're a parent who's considering Great Hearts Online or any online school, you've got to go with Great Hearts Online. It gives you everything you need and then some. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, my name is Heidi Vasiloff and I'm the Executive Director of Great Hearts Online and we have a full agenda for you tonight. Um, we are so excited to share with you, uh, have you speak to some of our school leaders, to some of our parents, to some of our scholars, uh, to try to give you a full experience of who we are at Great Hearts Online. Our mission remains the same, whether we're in person or online with Great Hearts, and that is to cultivate the hearts and minds of our children in the pursuit of truth, 
goodness and beauty. And we cling to that big audacious goal because we believe that at the end, we're going to help our scholars become the best versions of themselves to be humans that are just truly humane in the way that they uh, interact with our society and to live in our world. Um, I used to say when I was the headmaster of a brick and mortar school, a Great Hearts brick and mortar school in Arizona, that at the end, if our students were not good at being good, then we had failed. Then we had failed because we are really pursuing virtue. And we are pursuing that through the classics. We are a classical liberal arts school, which means, as you see in the picture here, we will have students who are actually reading books, real books, um, as well as working on the computer. Uh, we want them to be in the outdoors and engage in learning. We want them to be doing projects and working together as a family. Um, so I am delighted to share our goal. Uh, our goal is really to have this this type of education be available to everybody, no matter where you live in the state of Texas. Um, we invite you to join this with us. And uh, we also know that this is a partnership between parents, our teachers, and our scholars. And so we really want you to understand who we are. And tonight we're going to share a little bit about ourselves. To kick it off is our brand new headmaster, Mr. Brian Daigle. Good evening, Brian. Thank you for being with us tonight. Hi, Heidi. Yes, of course. It's, it's my pleasure to be here and, and uh, join this, this wonderful live session. Brian, we are so pleased that you're joining our team and coming on board. Um, I really think the first question for most families is, is pretty clear. What is the vision for Great Hearts Online and how are you going to make the classical curriculum really come to life in an online setting, right? Uh, that we, we feel like we understand that in brick and mortar, but what does that really mean for us in, in, in an online setting? Yeah, that's great. Uh, it, it's naturally a, a, an important question because, <laughs> and it's naturally the first question because uh, as you alluded to, educating our children is so important. It is one of the most important decisions that we will make as parents. Um, so our vision at Great Hearts Online Texas is uh, moving from year one to year two and maturing and strengthening our three anchors, what we call our three anchors. We are a classical online hybrid school. And so that's the that's the big picture vision is going from year one to year two and, and fitting that movement into a much bigger uh, strategic vision for Great Hearts Online Texas. R regarding how classical education comes alive through Great Hearts Online Texas, the, the classical tradition is all about educating and forming the whole person, right? The holistic scholar, that we want to send off into the world as great citizens. Uh, that includes uh, forming their heart and their soul and their mind and their strength. And so what, what Great Hearts Online Texas affords um, are a few things. We, we give freedom within boundaries for scholars and for families, right? We have a balance of great curricula with live classes and independent work. We wanna strike that balance really beautifully with our teachers and with our scholars and our families um, we also have world-class teachers that we can hire from all around the United States, right? We are not bound by area code or by driving distance to, to choose from among, among the best applicants for our classrooms. Um, we also have wonderful at-home resources that you don't get with brick and mortar schools or with homeschooling even. Um, when you partner with an organization like Great Hearts Online Texas as as a family, you get resources, not only for your scholars, but also for you as a parent and as adults and as lifelong learners in our own journey. Um, we also get to partner with other societies and other institutions in our scholars' lives, right? So we're, as a hybrid school, as the, the video alluded to, we wanna give time back to families uh, and truly be wise in how we manage our scholars' time. And that also includes partnering with important institutions or societies that parents have already built around their children. And then lastly, as an on online classical education, we're able to highlight several key features of classical education. One of those being a wise use of our time, as I alluded to, certain teaching methods that are strengthened with our online tools within a, a classical pedagogy or classical method of instruction, and being able to effectively and efficiently and enjoyably present content in a way that is not easy to do with in-person courses. 
Um, we embrace technology as gifts uh, with, within our, our, our present moment of society. And we, we couple that with, with um, wonderful lifelong uh, or, or, or time-tested traditions uh, of, uh, of, of classical, classical methods of teaching. I love that. Thank you so much, Headmaster Daigle. And and I want to add in too. You know, as a as a public charter school, um, we really are able to provide this, you know, traditionally private school model uh, for free to students in Texas, and that's a delight for me. I I celebrate the idea that everybody who wants to have this kind of education can come and be part of that. And uh, and and um, it is it is a journey um, and a, a lovely one. My children went through Great Hearts program, and I will tell you over and over again that I am completely sold, both as a teacher and educator and as a parent. Um, I know one of the other big concerns with being online is how how do we have community? It, you know, we don't want to feel isolated. We don't. We want our children to build healthy relationships and to engage not only with their teachers, with their parents, but also with other other students that are studying and really, um, you know, engaging in those great dis discussions and that this great adventure called life. Um, what are some of the ways that we have plans, or what are some of the plans you have next year for building community? Yeah, yeah, this is another great question, right? It, it's a question not only um, because we're an online school, it's a question of our children in general, right? How do our children uh, become great citizens now in their immediate societies uh, and the peers they're around and then eventually into adulthood? A few things I want to highlight for our prospective families and for our current families um, is that our administration has done an incredible job of listening to our scholars and to our parents about, uh, about how important community is to our scholars. So that's the, the first big thing to highlight is we, we have listened, we are listening. Uh, the second important component of this is we have made this topic at Great Hearts Online Texas and Great Hearts Online in general, we have made this topic one of our top five initiatives to discuss um, and plan uh, before the, the, the start of the school year. There, there are a few principles about community building that we wanna hold close to us. The first one is that it is incredibly important that we make this a priority for our school and get it right. That's the first thing I want parents to know. This is an important priority for us and we wanna to work to get this right. Second, it is important that we partner with parents to succeed with this. This is not one of those topics where we as a school can, can grab the idea, run off, come back with a great solution and, and, and put it in place. We have to partner with our parents in a, in a wonderful relationship to ensure that we get this right. Another important principle that we're gonna, we're gonna make sure is at the forefront of our, our answer on community building and community engagement um, is that it is important that our community building initiatives are in alignment with our mission and vision as a classical online hybrid school in Texas, which pursues the true, the good, and the beautiful. Our Great Hearts Online Texas leadership, especially our operations team to get real specific, uh, have worked to think creatively of a three to five year build out plan with our houses, with regional events, with athletics, even something like incorporating esports and clubs, athletic clubs into uh, the life of our school, uh, more academically centered gatherings, field trips, uh, events around state testing dates when students will be gathering already in person, uh, and wanting to be realistic about what we can implement from year one to year two at Great Hearts Online Texas. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. I know, Mr. Tegel, we will have you come back and answer questions at the end. And I know we're uh, we're pressed for time, so I apologize for that. But yes, so the answer is yes, we have community across yeah. the board. And I love the fact that we can do it in all these different venues. I'm so sorry. Uh, we're keeping <laughs> moving along. So uh, yeah. thank you so much. And we'll see you for the Q&A. Great. Um, I'd like to next invite up Ms. Stone, who is our Dean, or no, excuse me, the Assistant Headmaster of Great Hearts Online Texas. Uh, good evening, Ms. Stone. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, you know what? One of the big questions we get along with the ones we've been asking so far is, what does a day in the life look like or what, what can students expect? In fact, I saw some questions in the chat. Could my child be part of an orchestra at two o'clock on Wednesdays, right? Uh, would you mind sharing a little bit about the schedule? Yeah, absolutely. So um, good news is yes, they could be part of an orchestra at two o'clock on Wednesdays. Um, our, our classes consist of a mixture of live learning and independent work. 
our live learning happens Monday through Thursday from approximately eight to noon. Now that is a shorter amount of time for the younger students. Um, the K through two students that they're spending about two hours in live time with their teachers. And then they have an additional um, live time for reading groups, just like a short time for reading groups. But then um, as the older students, they're transitioning um, between subject teachers between eight and 12 and getting all their uh, live classes in. All our students start with a homeroom um, at eight o'clock to kind of check in, uh, make sure they're ready to go and then go off to their subject areas. I love that. And there's a few other things scattered in there, like reading groups and specials, but but our classes are over at noon. And uh, I think that's really important. So that hopefully allows for families who like a little bit more flexibility uh, to be able to, to engage in those great activities. Um, the other piece that we really want, we've had questions on is how do you keep how do you keep our students engaged? What are some techniques? What are, you know, are they just going to sit and look at a computer for two hours? Um, what are some ways that our teachers are really um, not only engaging, but getting to know and uh, really understanding the where the students are in their life um, and in their, in their education? And uh, would you share some of those pedagogical approaches with us? Yeah, absolutely. So this year I, I served as a dean and one of the great jobs of being a dean is you get to jump in and observe classes and teachers and, and see what's really going on during their lifetime and then um, check out some of their activities that they're doing um, during independent study. Um, in first grade, uh, well, first and second grade, that in second grade, they were studying matter, which I thought it was really cool. They started with an activity called science in a scientist in action. And um, you can see a picture of it here. They were supposed to take any objects they had around their house and build something. And then with those same exact objects, break them down and rebuild another thing. Um, I know this seems like a really a simple project, but that's setting up our second graders to understand like the law of conservation of matter when they get into middle school. So I, I thought that was a really um, nice way to bring in, they could bring in anything they want from their home and um, uh, understand a more complex or start to understand a more complex uh, concept sorry um and then they even do they then even got to solids and liquids and gases and there's a little boy who who shared a video um with his teacher about how he um had ice cream and he turned that solid into a liquid um and they they did their little experiments like that which i thought was uh, great with a way they can share their steps either well, when they're in younger they can use videos and just use their words and they get older they they learn how to um, fill out their lab reports. Um, yeah, sorry. In fifth grade, um, one of the classes, they just finished reading where the red fern grows. And during class, they're coming together to have um, discussions about the book, the theme and the virtues demonstrated during those, those well, as I read the book with the characters. And in fifth grade, they're starting to scaffold what a middle school and high school eventually um, dis Socratic discussion would look like for, for literature. So she's starting out by giving them the questions and they come prepared and they want to um, share what they have and, and they start to comment um, off each other's ideas and starting to learn how to use text to support what they're learning or what they're sharing from the book. And I really love the last project they did. Um, in fifth grade, they got to they did their capstone project where they depicted the main character and and demonstrated themes from the book, and then they got to share. So there's some pictures of that. That's great, and I know you have one more um, about the middle school. Can we yeah, I can go really quick. I'm sorry, I know we're running out of time. Uh, the seventh, uh, one thing I really love about uh, seventh and eighth grade math, they're starting to tackle some hard. Um, our challenging math subjects here. And our, our math teacher is great about getting the children to work together. The scholars, they work together in groups and everybody has a job. And you can see here, they have a, a board, it's called a jam board and she puts the problems on there. And then all the students, um, all the different colors there are different students working together to solve problems. It's really as beautiful. 
I love it. I love that collaboration and that small group work. Um, Ms. Stone, I'm going to invite you back at the end to answer any questions we have as well. I know this was a quick look at some of our <laughs> approaches. Thank you so much. Thank you. Come forward for mm -hmm. us. One of our families. Um, will Brian and Jack Cummings please join us? Good evening, Cummings family. How are you? Doing great. How are you? Great. Thank you so much for being here. I know as a parent, when you're trying to decide if this is a good fit or, or not, uh, the best people to talk to are the parents and the students because they're going to give you the, the true skinny on it here. Um, Jack, I'd love to start with you. Uh, as a scholar here at, uh, well, first of all, will you introduce us, introduce yourself and tell us what grade you're in? Um, my, um, I am in fourth grade and my name is Jack Cummings, as you can probably tell. <laughs> and who's your homeroom teacher? Uh, Miss Mendezabal. Great. That is fantastic. And I just, you know, I always have to ask this question. What's your favorite subject? Science. Go oh, science. And why? What, 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 is, what is something that appeals to you in that? What's one of your favorite projects in science? Um, I love the per periodic table, and I also love the uh, well, the per periodic table uh, pro project because you get to pick five of your favorite e elements that you have around the house, and and you get to learn about them, research on them. It's just a lot, lot of fun overall. I absolutely love that. I love the fact that you would find them and apply them. And and I will tell you that there's there's not a lot of kids in high school that really love the periodic table. So I'm glad you're starting now to love it because I love it too. Um, Dad, Brian, I would love for you to share a little bit about how is Great Hearts Online working for your family? Um, why is it a good fit for your family? Oh, it, it is an incredible fit for our family. Um, we struggled, like I think most people did during COVID, with uh, homeschooling and um, and online schooling and things like that with our brick and mortar school. Um, and um, my son Jack here, um, I asked him if I could share this, and he said it was okay. Um, has had you know had struggles with some health issues, and so we had a lot of absences um, uh, when we were in the brick and mortar schools. But now even when he's not feeling well, he can still participate in class and, and get on and get the information where when he was missing, you know, 40, 50 days of school before he, he just couldn't, uh, he would fall too far behind. And the education that he's receiving from Great Hearts is, um, uh, is second to none. Uh, I mean, he's learning things in math that I didn't learn until I was in junior high, high school. Uh, he's telling me about algebra and the periodic table and it just blows me away. It's an absolutely outstanding program, and it has fit so well with our family. I, I can't even put into words how well it's how well it's worked out. I love that. I felt the same way all the way through. I thought, I don't think I learned that till college. How are you learning this now? Um, thank you for sharing that um, with us so much. Jack, I'm going back to you. Thinking about a project, uh, maybe not something in science, or another, or a book, that you've read. Is there one in particular that really stood out that you thought this was just not only fun, but I learned something um, while I did it? Um, I think that just like, well, uh, um, the, it's print. My favorite book is print, Princess and the Gob Goblin because it has so much like mystery behind it and and it make it just it it makes you want to read more on into the book to see if you can find out or figure out what's happening i love that i love 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 that that's going to bring your curiosity forward um Dad, I'm going to go back to you, Brian. Um, what is what are what's a what's a, a hint or a trick or just a little piece of advice or something that you felt helped you um, engage in this? Because it really is a partnership between you as a parent, us as a teacher, and certainly our scholar. But it's not uh, it's not hands off by any means. Um, but it's also just it requires a little bit of you know partnership there. What's some things that you might have done at home that really helped you? Well, you know. I 
I think the most important thing is to make sure that your your child has a designated space to do their work, um, not just like grabbing a laptop and going to the couch. But like we we have a, a little desk a desk set up and and a printer and things like that. So he has his own designated space that he can go to every morning. So help with the routine and keeping him organized. Uh, but I you know I have to I, I you had mentioned about you know it's definitely not hands off. But I have to say you guys do an outstanding job of putting the onus on the scholar uh, to do the work and not so much on the parent to, to translate everything and figure out the computer programs and things like that. I would say 99% of the time I am very hands off unless he needs help with homework or something like that when he's not in homeroom class. So it really is, um, uh, it really is like him going to school every morning. I love that. And I think that space is really important. In fact, one of the first assignments we do is take a picture of your space and send it to us to make sure you've got a classroom. Um, Jack, I'm going to end up with you here. Uh, do you have any um, suggestions or hints or advice for anybody who's thinking about coming to this school? Well, I, I would say it's probably um, um, definitely be like ready for a lot of work because there's definitely a lot of work that comes with this but it's definite it's def it's definitely worth it all and um and i'd say to to have like a schedule like have like like after lunch you you you, you do a certain subject in, in uh, of those assignments and in, in, in another subject and only those subjects assignments un until you're t until you're done with it. I love that. I think having a plan of action is really important and what a good skill set for long term. Um, thank you so much, the Cum Cummings, for being with us tonight. Uh, we might have questions for you at the end um, and I look forward to uh, talking to you some more. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you. I'd like to now just move up a little bit in the age grades and uh, invite Miss Elizabeth Wilson to come join us, one of our sixth graders at Great Hearts Online. Hi, Elizabeth. How are you? Hi. <laughs> um, thank you again so much for being here and for speaking with us. Um, and I'm so excited to ask you this question because I kind of know the answer. Elizabeth, can you share with us your favorite subject and why? Um, my favorite subject is science awesome. and I really love science because of how many like experiments we do and how we just learn so because we're doing life science so we learn so much about animals and uh different groups of animals and we also learn about plants at the beginning of the year we learned about plants and mushrooms and then we moved on to cells so that's a, a picture of my cell project and then we also learned about um animals and arthropods or insects and we had in um an animal project and we got to choose an animal or insect of our choice and i chose a monarch butterfly and it's always just because of my fascination with their process of, meta of metamorphosis and how they migrate literally across the country just uh because they can't handle the cold so they go across the country to where it's warmer and then when it turns to spring, they go all the way back. And I made a whole diorama of it. And I just really love that. I love that so much. I saw that that, that Monarch or Butterfly exhibit or your, your diorama. And it's beautiful. First of all, it's artistic as well as being scientific, which is a, a perfect blend. I know that you had another project that you just recently did as well. Will you share that with our families? Um. Yes. Is it the history? Yeah, the okay. owls. We did that during uh, project week, which was in the middle of January. And we had to do a history project based on the, the, I believe it was the, oh, I forgot what it was called. Um, sorry, I forgot what it was. No, it's okay. Um, it was an era during, uh, in America where many people had to work um, in, in some difficult jobs and we got to choose different jobs of uh, things like a hat maker or masonry and I chose masonry. And I learned about so many different aspects of this job from like the tools and the health risks that came with it and all the different techniques that they use and how 
mo they use uh, most of the stones for architecture and different things like houses and all of this stuff and how and what fascinated me the most was like the health risks in this because I didn't realize like how much uh, you're risking in this project because it could just be from like um, like I don't know like just uh, scratching your thumb from something to the point of like actually inhaling some of the dust from like cutting up all these rocks and you can get um I forgot what it's called but it was a certain type of disease that you could develop over time in your lungs and it's like wow like there's so much that goes into this job i love that i absolutely love it and i know that you did another science project we were talking about a little earlier uh with a certain owl yes um, and can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I think one of the things that we assume when we're online is that we don't get to do a lot of things with our hands. Um, but I know one of the things that we've tried to do is provide a science kit. So will you tell us about our, your latest science kit project? So just a couple weeks ago, I believe it was like one or two weeks ago, we did an owl pellet dissection in class. And an owl pellet is basically when an owl eats something, particularly a rat, um, or a mouse, they will eat it, they will digest it, and whatever they cannot digest, like bones or the fur of the rat, they, it will all clump up and the bones will clump around, uh, the, the fur will clump around the bones, and it creates like this little, uh, well, pellet, basically, pellet, yeah. <laughs> that'll grow up after it eats and it comes out like that, and uh, we received it in our science kit and it came in a bag wrapped in tin foil and we had to open that up and basically cut it open and then take out all the bones, inspect them very carefully because they're very fragile. And then you would take out them and then identify which bones they were. And then you would put them out in a, like a skeleton and you could see all the different parts of it, like where their legs would be, their skull entirely, their jaw is just... I love it. I love it. It's so interesting to think that that's the way that they process their food. We can go, we can talk science any day. Yeah. Um, I do have two questions, though, that I want to end with for Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I want you to talk about your favorite book and the character. And then, I, if you don't mind, share a little bit about what tips or tricks you might have for anybody who's interested in joining Great Hats Online. So my favorite book this year was Anne of Green Gables. And I really love this because of uh, the character Anne, because of how like funny she is. And she always, uh, she talks a lot, which I can, um, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot the word that I was gonna use. Um, <laughs> uh, She's very chatty, I know that, and yeah, very curious, I right? I can relate to her is what I was trying to say. Because <laughs> I tend to talk a lot, and I ask a lot of questions, which is what she does most of the time. And she talks so much, and she asks all these questions when she was coming from back, uh, back from the train station because she was uh, an orphan. And this family, they wanted her. Uh, they were looking for a boy, but instead they got her. And when she, she, when they were bringing her home, she was just asking all these questions like, why do you call your neighbor this? Why is that river named that? Why does this pond name that? Why do you call this? Why does that look like that? What's wrong with that tree? <laughs> it's all of this stuff of how she talks so much and how funny she is. And then uh, the little, she's so clumsy and she makes all these little mistakes that just get her into a bit of trouble. And she's just so funny. And she overcomes so much stuff with the fact that this family didn't really want her at the start, but when they learned more and more about her and she kind of let her true self, like her true self, like come out over time, they sort of accepted her and were like, okay, we'll keep you. And then over time, they're just like, all right, we'll keep you and we love you and all this stuff. And she's I love it. happy. I really love that book. And then uh, a couple of tips that I would give someone who's coming um, into Great Hearts is that organization is key with some of this because um, when you're writing down notes, uh, it's, it's good to like keep them in a Google Doc and then with that Google Doc uh, on your computer or so, to keep them in like a folder or something so that way you know where they are and so you don't lose them especially. And um, also to make a schedule. So you'll have your regular school schedule, but then after that you might wanna spend like, I don't know, 30 minutes on lunch or maybe a little bit more um, if you'd like. And then uh, after that, you could 
pick a certain amount of time that you would like to spend on a certain subject and time that especially, but make sure to take your time on it, not to not spend too much time um, <laughs> right. when, uh, in a certain time so that we finish it. Um, and it doesn't interfere too much if like you have an extracurricular activity so that way it doesn't interfere with it too much. I love it. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you for sharing uh, with our families. And uh, if you don't mind hanging tight too, just in case somebody else has another question. Um, but thank you for sharing with us this evening. Thank you. Um, I'd like to invite one more scholar. We're moving up in grades, a seventh grader. AZ Stevens, will you join me? Hi, AZ. How are you this evening? I'm good. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here to speak to our families. Um, so I, uh, you used to attend, so this is my first question for you, you used to attend a brick and mortar great heart school, and now you're online. Can you talk about the transition between brick and mortar and online? Was it hard? You know, what were some things that you, that you experienced? So when COVID hit, yes. we already moved to like the um, great heart Irving online, and that definitely wasn't as good as um, Great Hearts Online. And Great Hearts Online, first of all, gives you, I feel like for me personally, a lot more time. Like, it gives me a lot more time um, to play outside and hang out with friends and do a lot of extracurricular activities because I do a lot of those. And um, I also think it's a lot like in-person school, just also since I get very anxious about a lot of things, it's just less stressful for me. Like there are clubs, so you can attend clubs. I'm in birding club, and that's really fun. <laughs> Love that. Um, I think that's fantastic. <laughs> so it's just really, really fun. Well, AZ, I really appreciate that because I think some of the, the concerns are, how is it moving from one school to another? And you just seamlessly came in, and you just had it. It's been amazing from there. Um, in seventh grade, things get a little bit harder in middle school. And so I'm just curious as to a little bit about Lit Club. Is there a book that you really have loved this year and why? Okay, so I really loved Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. Um, it's just, I mean, it's about this world where basically technology is all people focus on and they're just kind of brainwashed to use technology and it's like even in the future it actually mentions the date 2022 is in the past but he just <laughs> predicted so accurately how um technology just kind of took over our world and i mean it's just kind of scary to think about but it's very interesting and we've also read a bunch of short stories by Ray Bradbury after we finished Fahrenheit 451. I love that. And can you tell just a little bit, do you guys seminar? Do you talk about books in class? Or... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we, uh, every day uh, during Lit Comp and other classes too, like um, history, but a lot in the comp will Mr. Chapman, my literature teacher, will have like these questions and then he'll turn off his camera and mute himself so we can't talk to him and then we can't raise our hands. We just have to jump into the conversation and it's really interesting and we'll just like kind of um answer question answer the questions but then also discuss the deeper meaning behind the words in the story i love that that is so great um i az what what tips or tricks or hints or suggestions would you give to any family that's thinking about in particular the students that are, or the scholars that are thinking about joining us next year um first of all just like in a brick and mortar school 
you're sitting down a lot of the time. You get out earlier so you can play more, but you're still sitting down. But they have these 10 minute breaks in between each class. So I would just advise to just like exercise and get your blood flowing before every class and make sure you have sharpened pencils. I know, you gotta have your tools in front of you, right? Your pencils and your paper. Yeah. I love that. AZ, thank you so much for being with us. Please stay on in case anybody has any more questions, um, but thank you for sharing your story and for helping our parents and our families think about joining us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, I'm so delighted to bring forward Raquel Zapata. Um, Raquel is our director. Hello, Raquel. Hi. Oh, I should start off with the important thing first. Raquel's <laughs> a parent of four boys, all Great Hearts Online, yep. and she's also our director of operations. And so uh, we're just so pleased you're, you're here. You have such a great perspective. You're, you see the classes as both a parent and as a um, as an administrator with us. Um, and I just would love for you to share um, kind of your experience with Great Hearts Online and maybe your unique take on it. Yeah, so um, as you mentioned, I have four boys. Um, this year they are in seventh, fifth, fourth and second grade. Uh, sorry, I had to think about that. Um, and three of my four actually are in SPED services for different reasons, um, and they receive different services. So we started at brick and mortar um, when my oldest was in kinder. So we've been with Great Hearts for a very long time, um, and we loved it. In all honesty, it was wonderful. And um, we weren't quite sure whether to make the jump to online, but I'm so glad we did. Um, because the more that we've spent online, the more we've come to realize just how much more engaged we can be with each of our boys and really help serve their individual needs and their focus of where they may be struggling um, or where they just don't need as much support. Um, you know, from SPED support services or teachers in tutoring sessions, or even from us, right? They, they've got it. Um, and it varies by subject area and it varies quite honestly by topic area. So it, it might be, um, you know, for the first six weeks, they really need additional support and they need to go to tutoring classes, um, which are provided yeah. by Great Hearts for free. Um, they might need to go for math, but then when we get to the next quarter, the subject area, that they need more help in is history, right? And so it all varies. Um, but I also, like I said, they, they get support services as well. So I have a few that are in speech therapy that they get from the school. Um, I have a few that receive SPED support services from the SPED teachers. Um, a couple of mine also go to reading intervention. So they have reading support services. Um, and all of that is in addition to tutoring, which you know is provided to all of our scholars regardless of services. Um, so, you know, they they get everything they need from the school. I am really here just to provide some support um, when they need some, they have a few questions or even technology concerns, like, mom, am I turning this in correctly? Um, you know, is the picture look okay? I, I, I love that. And I know one of the things that is very exciting about that is you actually know what your children, I mean, in a way that I, even as a, an employee of the school and in the Perkins Board School, uh, couldn't see the discussions in the same way. You actually know what's happening in the classes and what they're covering and the content because you're in the same house. And I do. You know, I do. Yeah. You know, and, and I will mention, you know, from that standpoint, much more than even we, you know, we we get information when you're at Great Hearts in the brick and mortars, but being having them here at the house, um, there's there's no substitute for it. You're, you're engaged. You're not in the room with them. You're not in class with them. They're independent from that standpoint, um, but it's in the house. And so you're very much aware of what they're learning, what their assignments are, what they're working on during live class, which would normally be in the classroom that you wouldn't see if they were in a brick and mortar and what they're doing at home. And so, um, you know, a very good example that I've, I've shared with families is Great Hearts has the classical education. We, we, teach the truth right we go to the source material we don't we don't teach um interpretations of the truth we go to the source and sometimes with doing so the content 
can be a little hard. Yes. Sometimes. The topic area can be hard um, to, to understand. And, you know, my my oldest just a couple of years ago was really struggling to understand slavery um, in all honesty. And it, it wasn't that he didn't understand the concept. He just didn't understand how and why we did it. Um, and so really being able to see what was being discussed and deciding for myself as a parent what additional information I could provide him to help him around that was very beneficial. I, I appreciate that so much, Raquel. Raquel, I'm going to actually move into Q&A because most of these are for you anyhow. No, I mean, because <laughs> you can help with a lot of these as well. Um, and also, I'm going to start off with a community question. Um, there were some questions about sports, um, about the specificity around that. Um, what are some of the things that, that, that are just, I mean, just five or six things that are very much just things that we've done this year or things that we're looking to do next year as well. Yeah. So a lot, a lot around community. Um, we want our kids to get together. We want them to socialize with each other. We want them to socialize with their teachers. Um, we do field trips. They're not required, um, but we do encourage them to get together um, in their local communities and we help set those up. We also ask our parents to help coordinate get togethers. Um, our micro schools have helped us with some events like the water rocket that you'll see there, the pictures. Um, one of our deans this year, she actually was was um, doing a, a reading group on Fridays. And they that's one of the pictures you'll see there. They actually got together and she read in the park. And so we live streamed it for those who were unable to attend. But for those who were local and they could go, um, it was really sweet to see that. And then it was they got to do a live butterfly release at the end. It was really lovely. I love um, and then the last picture is an example of our kids playing sports. So this year we've partnered with I9, and, which I hope some of most of you will be familiar with that organization. They have really great values and virtues on what they teach their uh, their team members. It They allow all grades, uh, excuse me, all ages from three to 14 to participate and play together. And we've partnered with them, which um, allows all of our families to sign up at a discounted rate and actually get placed on team so that all of our Great Hearts Online Scholars can be on a team together and allow them to really um, just enjoy and have fun and get outside. So great. Thank you so much, Raquel. Um, I'd like to invite Heather. Stay, please stay, Ms. I'd like to invite Heather and Brian back on and let's take on some of these questions. Here we go. So let's see, what's our first question here? Um, is there a late policy? Is there freedom to miss classes and make them up? Hmm, Heather, I don't know if I should have you. She was the dean last year. So there is a late policy, as you can imagine. Would you like to answer that? And we're gonna try to be quick so we can get through a whole bunch of them. Sure, absolutely. There, uh, We do have, our assignments are due by the end, of, well, midnight, but we obviously don't want scholars tournament in at midnight, but uh, due before the next day. And there is a, a late, um, policy where they can turn them in late, but they're going to lose um, some um, points for that. Of course, if there's an excused absence or something like that, we give grace that way. And missing class, again, it would be like brick and mortar school. You don't, you, we want you in lifetime. If you're, if you're, scholar sick or has a doctor's appointment or you have to travel for a funeral, um, we can um, work with you, possibly uh, provide recordings, but uh, we encourage them to be in, in class. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, question two. Uh, how much are books and materials, Ms. Zapata? So this um, will vary by grade level because the material varies by grade level. Um, and, but I will say that the price, we we keep it as low as we possibly can. And I say it's very comparable to what you would pay at a brick and mortar school for school supplies um, or any other school. Um, many of the, that being said, many of the items on the school supply list, you more than likely already have at home. Um, unlike brick and mortar, we don't really require a certain type of pencil or a certain amount of crayons or a certain type of scissors, right? All we really care about is that they have the school supplies they need at home. And most of, the, most of them you're, you will have already at your house. Um, but we do provide the list in, early in the summer so that you have some time to review and take a look at it. Um, 
And then we do have a program for, um, for families if there's any kind of financial assistance needed where we might be able to help provide some of those supplies. Thank you. And we also send every student a student success kit, which has all kinds of things, science supplies, textbooks, all kinds of workbooks in it. And that is um, not charged for. It's really the supplies that we would expect you to have at home. So right. thank you so much. All right. Question number three. Here we go. Is pop culture banned from Great Hearts Online similar to Brick? Yes. That is the fastest answer. Yes, that is true. Uh, we do not. Um, we want them to focus on, on scholarly activities. And therefore, uh, we ask that when you when they put on their uniform and show up to class, they're engaging in the pursuit of something really true, good, and beautiful. And we're going to focus them on what they're learning, not on the things in the world around us, except for the outdoors. Which, okay, I'm a science teacher. In case you didn't pick up on that, by nature, uh, can online can an online student participate in school sports uh, that the person in person learners have the have the ability to go to? Um, we have separate clubs that we would run for that. So they would they would be part of the I-9 program. Raquel, anything else to add to that? We're good? Nope. All right. Thank you. Uh, will they meet the teachers before the start of the school? Yes. We have a meet the teacher event. Um, they also will get videos of them. And so, the, yes, all of that happens just like in a traditional school setting. Good questions. Thank you. Uh, what about tutoring? I have a son who really struggles in math. I'd like to know. Oh, yes. Um, Heather, do you want to start to start us with that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, all of our core teachers have tutoring hours or office hours, and that's free. I think I saw somebody ask about that. Um, it is a time they'll set up and they'll publish on their um, homepage for their course and the students will know when they can jump in and get help. For math, it's usually twice a week. And then we also have a math interventionist and the math interventionist uses data from our, our map test to figure out what each scholar needs and tries to uh, like strengthen their foundation. So we have intervention. And then as Ms. Zapata mentioned, we also have our SPED teachers. Our, so we have lots of different support networks in place uh, to make sure our scholars can really embrace and get it. So great. Next question. Not yet, but next, not next year, but the year after. So not yet. We're working on it really hard. Uh, not, we do not have a high school program yet. I'm a GHO parent, first and foremost. I'd like to say how wonderful the program's been. Yay! What will the schedule be like for first grade? Who wants to take that one? Heather? Raquel? Me? Having had a first grader last year, um, I can tell you it, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> they don't spend a lot of time on the computer. Um, you're looking at just a couple of hours um, with plenty of breaks in there. Um, mine often like to go run outside and jump on the trampoline for a couple of minutes before they came back in uh, which was good but they they start at eight o'clock or at 10 o'clock um typically come in for a few hours monday through thursday as miss stone said and then they have usually a 20 30 minute break before they have their specials class for the day so we we try to especially for the smaller younger scholars we tried to very much minimize the amount of screen time um, that they're in live instruction because they need to get up, they need to move around and, and we want them to be off camera um, and off the computer as much as possible. Great, I think we have run out. Oh, we get another question, yay, okay. Uh, what does fine arts classes look like? Are those classes within the eight to 12 hours or the afternoon? Um, so they are all, all of our classes occur between eight and noon. Um, if you are in a K through two program, you would have your two hour block and then one of those specials uh, three days a week. Um, so you'd have either art, music or Spanish. Um, if you are in the fourth or third grade through uh, eighth grade, uh, they will be there will be a block in there. So you'll have um, an ELA block, English language arts, a math block a history and science that rotates every two days. And then the last block is for art, music, and language. So if you're in the upper grade, you have Latin twice a week, art one day, music one day. And the rest of the work is all asynchronous. It's all independent, but you have that live time. All right, I think I'm getting notes that we're running out of, we've run out of time. Are we, any other words from there? 
All right, last one. Thank you all so much for joining us. We are so grateful for your time. If you have any other questions, please reach out. Our website is greatheartsonline.org. Our email is info at greatheartsonline.org. Um, please reach out and ask any questions. We're, we're more than happy to answer them and look forward to seeing some of you soon. Have a great evening.